Hi, I'm Brian. Today we're going to do a rocking chair repair on a Honda Civic. You didn't know that Honda Civics had rocking chairs? Well, some of them do. Let me show you what I mean. Move it back and forth. You can see it's not secure. And that the movement translates through the whole thing and this is on the height adjustable ones you've got this dial that makes the seat go up or down so this is on a four link meaning that there's a bar with a pivot on each end uh, here 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 and here so it kind of keeps it parallel but moves it forward and up when you go to adjust it one way and back down so looking underneath when you move up and down you can see a little bit of the link right here you get a ton of movement it's almost all in the front so what you can do is you can make new links that are nice and tight and put those in or the other thing is you can repair these or just replace the whole seat the part that's moving is the upper part uh, your third option is to just pick a happy ground in the middle and just weld it solid so that it just doesn't move at all that's the easiest fix but then you lose the adjustability ideally I'd like to have the owner of the car here to sit in it and test it but they're in Egypt so that's not gonna happen so I had Mrs. Brian's mobile one sit in this she's a little bit taller than the driver I don't know it doesn't seem like much seems like a lot when you're sitting in it but this is definitely higher than that one so that way you can have resale value a tall person can actually still drive it when it's up all the way it's just just seems like a little too much then we'll just uh, weld it fixed the person coming back from Egypt says do it this way so that's what we do So with the seat all the way forward, you pull these covers off, wiggle them, pull them, pry them each way. This one happens to clip on here and on the sides here. And then this one's the same way. I had to stage them because I really had to wrestle and experiment so I didn't break the plastic. But you see the clip there and the clip right there. Once those are out of the way, you can use 14 millimeter socket. Link in the description for this super fun air compressorless tool. Let me go up to the front, a little harder to get to. And then the one on the left, and now we're free to tip back. Once you tip the seat back, you can get to all the different connectors a lot easier. So just push in the tabs, pull them apart. So to get these undone, it's like a syringe. You pull back here and it lets go. So the next step is we need to get the seat out of the car. Take off the headrest. You can kind of come out as a seat. This got to commit and not put the seat base down on the back seat because it's greasy. All right, so this is the dirty side. I set tools, dirty things here. I'm gonna pull off this knob. There's a clip you pull out. So this this knob, once you pull it off, you get the radioactive access there. And then in the back, you can see it's got a slot and a catch. So you've got this little clip that goes on there. So you just clip it on from the non-restrictor side and you can see that holds it on there. So to get to this, from the other side, when you look through, you can see through one of them how you have access to get in and then pull the clip up and out. Getting the seat side apart, you've got a screw here. So rather than lose the screw, I'm just gonna put it right back in the explosive device we call this a pretensioner and see it's got the pretensioner and it's got a yellow clip and a yellow plug that means this goes bang to pretension your seat belt yay anytime you see these it means bang and when i look at it so let's take a look at the problem we've got access enough to where we could probably take a peek at it let's see if i can get this off too while i'm getting in the neighborhood there's one screw behind that knob. So here's where the handle is, here's where the screw came from. We'll put it back in the frame so it doesn't get lost. Nothing like not being able to put something together because you got one stupid screw missing. Now that we have access, I want you to bear in mind if you have a gun and you're aiming at something over here, a slight movement that much makes it clear over here. So what I'm showing you is like the effect of leverage or angles or whatever you want to call it. It causes this tiny, tiny movement here to be a big movement 
further down. So watch the movement between this link point here and this one here. So the play that you see in this one uh, translates to everything. If I could buy a new plate like this from the dealer and slap it on, it'd be the easiest fix in the world. Unfortunately, they don't sell those. You gotta buy the whole new seat. The other thing you can do is make a link yourself, but the difficulty is you see how this is reinforced right here and it's thick stuff and there's an offset between the two. It's not straight, so you'd have to bend it and get it to work and it takes a big press and it's not as easy as it looks. And that, my friends, is why we're going to weld this. This is the opposite side, but we have the same thing. So these aren't wearing out so much. Yeah, they are. It causes the whole thing to move together, but it's just worn out. So to recap, I need to weld right here, across here, uh, here in this little joint there. I need to tighten these excessively. That might even just take care of the whole thing and not have to weld at all. Tighten it down. Nice thing about doing this instead of welding is if we want to get in there and change it, we can. But it's not wiggling anymore, but with the body weight pushing against the seat, it might. Jeez Louise, that's like solid. Like, eh, not quite any bit of play. This one, for whatever reason, is just not holding tight. So tightening the bolts down makes a huge difference, tremendous difference, but it doesn't solve it completely. Welding, it's going to solve it completely. What have you done? I've basically cleaned this out so that I can weld to it. I'm going to take a little paper towel and use some brake cleaner. Probably should have cleaned it before grinding. It probably spread contaminants. But I'm going to glob the weld in there to the point where it's probably not going to matter. I cleverly disguised the chair as a welding jacket. I'm just trying to protect the upholstery. I'm doing this over cement. So I've got this all cleaned up. <clears throat> I just need to hood down and tack it. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to weld like a buttress between the two pieces. So what I do is there's a big gap there, so I start at the base and then I go up and then back, up and then back and just kind of build it like I'm making a spider web. So this is how the other side turned out. It turned into more of just a tack. I got too hot, stayed on it too long on this one. You can see where it started to slump. And then this one turned out just really pretty, really. Really pretty, really. Palinendrome almost. That was my ground. Uh, I didn't light anything on fire. I don't see any burn marks. I want to check the wiring and everything for all the airbag type stuff. This is a pretensioner is what it is. I just got to make sure that I didn't damage anything with the seat belt, the pretensioner, or any of the electronics associated with it. And a lot of this just doesn't get any paint because it's indoors. You can see it gets a light rusting. I don't really even have to paint this, which is nice, because then no paint smell. So we're back to where we started, except now I can shake the whole car by the seat, remove the car, and the seat hardly moves at all. When I get in to sit in it, it used to just rock like crazy, but now the car rocks, but the seat doesn't. That's what we like. Thanks for watching my video. As always, I appreciate your support. If you subscribe, click the like button. If this helped you out, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Cheers. Hey, and one more thing. There's links in the description with all my different social media stuff. If you'd like to follow along and see what I'm working on before I post something like this, you can follow me there. I post a bunch of stuff there. And then also I have links in the description for the welder that I use, as well as other tools and things for the job, like that little uh, impact driver. So you can check that out there. If you have any license plates or anything you want to send me or a postcard, I love getting mailed to the P.O. Box. The address is at the bottom of the Show More. You just click Show More and then scroll down it's at the bottom. Brian's Mobile One, P.O. Box 282, Cedar Valley, Utah, 84013.
So take a look at this guy. He's been there, done that. You see the smile, you see the bike, you see the stickers. And uh, you see what he's riding here. He's got an R1200 BMW. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Where, who are you and where are you from and where are you headed? Uh, my name's Nabil. I'm from Egypt. Uh, I flew to uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. I bought the bike there. And I've been on the road now for four months, over for almost five months. I went, I uh, basically uh, stuck on the eastern side of the continent uh -huh. and then reached to the, the end, uh, Ushuaia, which is the world's end, and then hung west. So, what, so is it, tell me about this sticker here. Where did this come from? This one was from Buenos Aires. Oh, it was? Oh, yeah. In Argentina. In Argentina. So you flew into Brazil, to Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, and you went clear south. Why did you stop going south? <laughs> there was nowhere to go. <laughs> there was nowhere else to go. Oh, that's a good reason. Yeah. And so, uh, so we're in Utah now, we're in Kanab. Yeah. And uh, where are you headed? Well, I'm, tomorrow I'm gonna head uh, north. Uh, first Zion and then Bryce. Uh -huh. And then, um, see how far I get with this weather. <laughs> so you've gone a lot of miles to be able to go from all the way to the south tip of South America in Argentina down by the end of Chile and then to head up all this way. What do you do for tires? T tires, I... Uh... I mean, that's a lot of miles. How many miles do you think that you've gone or how many kilometers? Okay, I've now I've clocked in 30,000 kilometers. 30,000. So I think that's around uh, 20,000 miles, probably a little more. I've been through three sets of tires. Uh -huh. uh, the best tire for me, I don't, I, not many people know about it. It's a German company called Heidenau. Okay, how do you spell that? H-E-I-D-E-N-A-U. Cool. Heidenau. So. And what do you like about those tires? What makes well, them different? What's with the carcass on it? It's very, very the shell. Tough. Yeah, very tough. Uh -huh. So when you're in uh, Chile or in the Patagonia, you have nothing but dirt roads. Yeah, it's not it's not pavement like this. <laughs> and you, I mean, it goes for miles, and, and it's and it's not serviced. My final destination will be uh, Alaska, uh -huh. which I'm waiting for the snow to melt before I can get up there. <laughs> So, in terms of time, how much time will this trip take going from the, the southern tip of South America to Alaska? Um, and are you going to Prudhoe Bay or Anchorage? Bay. Oh, wow. Yeah. But um, everyone's saying I should take my time in this part, like in, yeah. in uh, uh, the west, California, Oregon, uh, and especially British Columbia. Uh -huh. And Alaska is supposed to be beautiful, so I don't want to rush it. Yeah. So I don't want to say, yeah, okay, one month, but it could take me three months. That's awesome. Have you had any misadventures? Tell me about, well, first of all, maintenance on the bike. What do you do to keep the bike to where it, it can do what you need it to do? Well, um, I, I make sure that it's done at the service time. Uh -huh. It's due, I get it done. Uh, if I'm not near a dealer, I'll do it myself uh -huh. because I don't depend on it. Maybe I'll go into the dealer for him just to reset the computer, that's it. But other than that, I do it myself. So you had this idea, I want to go to America, I want to see everything. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you something. I, uh, this time last year, I just did a trip from Cairo to Cape Town. Uh -huh. So I covered all of Africa. So this is... <laughs> so, someone or You've all. been there, done that, you're experienced. <laughs> so I said next is South uh, the Americas, I gotta do that. So you did the African continent, yeah, now you're doing the Americas. Tell me about the Panama Canal, how did that go? Panama Canal, I had lots of problems. Uh, for me, because the bike is Brazilian, I'm Egyptian. Uh -huh. uh, El Salvador and Honduras, they, they require you that the owner and the bike be the same nationality. Really? So I could, I, I could. You had to circumvent those countries. You so had to go I around. So I got to Colombia, Bogota, uh -huh. which a lot of people do, is they, and then they just fly the bike to Miami <laughs> to, to avoid all. To this. avoid it, you just skip right over yeah. it. How do you fly a motorcycle over? They, you, they, they crate it. Uh -huh. they put it on a crate, and they just put it in the bottom of the bank. Cool. But not for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. 
Well, thank you. This is this is fascinating. You're tr you're truly an adventurer. <laughs> well, I hope to inspire others. You know, you know the, what's the your world's out there. To, you gotta just go and do it. What's the worst thing that's happened to you on the trip, either between Africa or doing the Americas? What's the worst thing? The worst thing was dealing with corrupt cops. Corrupt police. Police. They won't mind. Like in Bolivia. Uh huh. They're very bad. I mean, the country's beautiful, but they're just. You know, I don't like to say bad things, but you know. You, you don't like to be abused either. Yeah, but hey, you know, they send me, you have to pay dollars. That's all they know is dollar, dollar. Uh -huh. they, they see the dollar sign in there. Uh -huh. And then you pull up, pull up at a gas station, the guy would look, see so you have foreign plates, uh -huh. you pay three, three times the amount, three times the rate. You don't like it, leave. Yeah. Bluntly. Yeah. So that, that was the only, you know, just dealing with corrupt cops. Uh huh. So what's. So not to stay on the negative too long, okay. <laughs> but what's what's some of your favorite places that you've been or favorite places that you've seen? Uh, the Patagonia in Chile. Uh huh. Uh, the, uh, Peru. Peru is really really nice. It's got amazing landscape. Very nice people. Good food. Uh, and Chile is also like I said, and Ecuador. Uh huh. Really really nice. You, know, you, you just main. You're on the, the Andes, you know, all the time. Uh huh. That's fantastic. So, as far as motorcycles, what should a person look for when they're getting an adventure bike or going for a trip like this? Well, this bike does it all. I mean, I've, I've, I've used it in Africa. It's, it never let me down. And the bigger engine's the way to go as opposed to a 650 or something smaller? Well, I'm a smaller guy, and you know, and, and I. I could go for the F800, uh -huh. which is you know a bit small, but you need you need you're carrying all this, so you need the power. You know? It's good to have the power. Yeah, it's got it's, it's not power, but torque, you know. Uh huh. You know, because some passes in Ecuador are just like muddy, and, and you just need that torque to get out of it. Gotcha. Well, awesome. Anything else that you'd like to add? Well, just tell you know everyone go out there and get it. <laughs> get out and live, huh? It's the best way. You know? That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you.